All right, I want to take everybody through this model I created here. Um, in my ongoing effort to build an actual wiki house that I will live in, um, I've decided it's probably wise to start small and simple and build something like a wood shed or a tool shed. So what I did here is I picked a size for my shed and I went on the WikiHouse open library and I downloaded a few of the modules. Um, and rather than copy paste uh, out of those, I ended up drawing all of the WikiHouse modules from scratch uh, for a couple reasons. I wanted to have a super organized, uh, very, very easy to edit SketchUp model. And also because of my experience building a WikiHouse at Maker Faire in New York last year, um, I wanted to make some changes to the design as well. So first I'm going to walk you through uh, just a couple of the changes that I made and then I'll show you how this model works because I'm really excited to see uh, what people think of this and, and what they will do with it. Um, and let me be clear that this is a derivative that I came up with of WikiHouse. This is not an original WikiHouse design, although I, I have incorporated a lot of the concepts that are in WikiHouse 3.0. So what I did here, and I'll let you guys explore the model and take a look, but there are as many repeatable parts as possible. So these wall panels, all three of them on the top are the same, all three on the bottom are the same. If we look at things like the roof and floor panels, um, I'll just take off this corrugated roofing. The ones on the outside are the same, the ones going down the middle are identical. They can also be flipped as well. It doesn't matter which way you install them. Uh, same thing with the floor panels. The outside ones are identical, they can be flipped. The ones in the middle are identical and can be flipped as well. So let's take off the floor panels and I'll show you some of the changes that were made here. Uh, one problem we had when we built the one in New York City is that in the version that we built, the primary connectors, so that's these guys right here and the secondary connectors, used to share the same slot on this fin here. So they, they had, you would actually stack them next to one another and drive a big peg through them uh, to hold them together. Now structurally that worked just fine. Um, in our inexperience uh, in building one of these things, we reversed the way that those were put in there a couple times. So what happened is we didn't realize this, but when we started snapping our floor panels in place, where the primary and secondary connectors pop up through the floor panel, our holes didn't line up. So we ended up having to take apart part of the structure and switch those connectors around and put it back together. To make sure that that doesn't happen again, I separated the primary and secondary connectors into different slots. And not only did I do that, I made the size of the slots different. So if we click into this component here, you can see the primary connector uh, goes into a large slot and the secondary connector goes through a small slot. So on site, it's going to be pretty hard to reverse where those go because the large one isn't going to fit in the small slot. And if you put the small one into the large slot, I think it's going to be pretty obvious that it's not the right part uh, for that area. So some of the other changes that I made as well were moving the S-joints. So ours in New York had an S-joint dead in the middle here. I moved those to the outside. That is also something that you'll see in WikiHouse 3.0. Um, another change that I made was changing the way that the fins are held together. So we'll go in here and just take a look at a single fin. Um, in, our, in our model in New York, we had one C-shaped piece and one wedge that would hold the fins together. Now that worked just fine, but um, what these are designed to do is just actually hold the two sets of fins together like a sandwich so they're easy to set up. And what we found is that while it did work fine, you had to be very ginger with um, standing up the fin or else it would pop apart. And the very, very easy fix to that is to just make a um, C on either side with a wedge in the middle. So I incorporated that change uh, as well. So let's take a look at how this SketchUp model is structured. So since I wanted to make this as easy to edit as humanly possible, um, I went crazy making this thing out of components. So Right now, this model is made out of actually only two components. So we'll turn the floor panels back on here. There is an end component, and there is a middle component. Now, if I double click and I edit something on this end component, and we'll do something real, uh, real simple here, like move this panel out, you'll see it automatically happens to the panel on the other side. And the reason why that is, is because in this structure, I intend for both end modules to always be identical, 
And what I did was I made one, one module, made it a component, I copied it, I mirrored it, and I put it on the back of the, the structure. Uh, so now whatever I do to this end here, it happens in its opposite on the other end. So it makes it very, very easy to edit. The center module um, is also a component. So let's say I made the structure a little bit bigger and you could do that by simply just copying this module out and extending the structure. But the main thing is, is when I edit something on this structure, that edit happens to all of those center modules. So that's really important as well. This will make it really, really easy to extend the structure out. Um, if we take off all of the paneling, so roof panels, outer panels, exterior panels, um, which by the way are all controlled by layers. There is a layer for every type of part that is on this model. Um, if we take that off, we're going to see again the, the three main modules here. Um, but these modules need these secondary connectors to connect them together. And I made all of these secondary connectors a component as well. And I can demonstrate that by just pulling one of them out like that. So that is all a singular component. And if I double click to go in to edit that component, you'll see that any edit here is perpetuated to all groups of those secondary uh, connectors. So this can be great if you need to move a slot or something like that. You can just move one of these connectors in one spot and it will move everywhere. Uh, so that's, a, that's an important edit as well. The other thing you'll notice here is that the slots and the S joints and everything else, they're not dog boned like they're supposed to be um, when you go for milling. And the reason why is that's because I'm not actually done editing this model yet. And I, I want this model to be very easy for people to edit. So I made every part in this model a component. So let's say we want to do something to this top beam here. So we double click several times because this component is buried um, deep in the tree. And now with one click, we can select this beam. And you know, you can do simple things like just move it around, um, but you can also actually edit it. So if, if we click, double click into the beam component to edit it, you'll find that this beam is not actually one group of geometry. It is actually five different pieces of geometry. And it's an S joint, a main section, these two keys that key into the panels and the end S joint. So take a look at what happens when I edit one S joint. So we'll go in here and when I make one edit to this one S joint, every single S joint in this model gets the same edit. And what that will allow us to do is if you wanted to put a tolerance in there uh, for different cutting heads or you wanted to add your dog bones or make some other kind of structural change to this S joint, you only have to do it in one spot. Uh, same thing with these keys. These are all these are all components, and you can see there are a lot of keys in this model. And if I edit one, they all edit automatically. Um, each, if you step back one level in these components, so for example, if I wanted to move this key that is on this beam, all of these beams are the same components. So no matter what move I do here, it gets perpetuated to each component. Same thing with a uh, like one of these slots. If I select it, I can move it around and you'll see that on every component it moves it. So take a look at this model. I encourage you to uh, hack it, take it apart, dissect it, ask questions. Um, and I wanted to put this out there as a, a potential design if you want to build something yourself. And I wanted to make it as easy as possible to edit. So please ask me questions. and. Also note that um, this is just my derivative of WikiHouse. I am neither an architect or an engineer, and I haven't built this thing yet. Um, so take those words of caution, um, but I'd love to see any results you guys come up with. Thank you.